So I was about right here when I went and looked and saw how far the tire was over her parking spot. I told her I would move my car um, after I used the bathroom. I came on up the stairs. When I got about right here, I said, excuse me. She was standing there facing me. And so she stepped back into the house like this. As I come in, she comes back out and bumps me. I say, wow, Khadijah, really? She say, like, yeah, what? And she jumps up in my face. Right now, I'm standing right here at the door. And she steps on my foot and starts cussing, talking about whatever bullshit you want, I'm on it too. I responded, told her I wasn't on no bullshit, what was wrong with her? And I went on down to my room. I'm in my room. She comes right here. I'm going to F you up. I'm going to F you up. And whatever, whatever, whatever. I try to close the door. She pushes it and tries to lunge at me, but I stopped her. And I said, Khadija, stop before somebody gets hurt. Stop. I'm not going to fight you. No, I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to fuck you up. So I'm holding her arms and she's basically just using her weight and force to come at me. Um, somehow, I don't know how, but I guess when she lunged at me, I stepped to the side and then she grabbed at me here because we ended up outside my bedroom. And um, I'm trying to get away from her this way, going this way. But I'm backing up, and she's pushing me this way. She slams me into the wall here. She tries to swing on me. I block her hits. I go up here. And I stand right here, and I'm like, Khadija, stop. I said, listen, I'm not afraid of you, but I'm not going to fight you because you're not worth me going to jail. And if I hit you, you're going to end up in the hospital. So just stop. I don't know what the fuck your problem is, but you need to get a grip and stop. So then she lunges at me again, trying to hit me. I'm going to fucking kill you. And so I grabbed her hands again. She can't swing. So she's using her weight to push me and she's backing me up like this. She's backing me up like this. I hit this door. That's the back door. Okay. I hit the door here with my back. Um, I kind of have her wedged this way up against this wall. And she's facing me this way. So she's trying to get loose and hit me. I'm trying to go to my right, but she's on my left. And so she kind of pulls me this way and she tries to throw me in over here in this corner. I trip over the water there. I almost go down. I don't know. I tripped. I ended up over here somewhere. I remember hanging on to touching on the grill like this, holding her. The lights right here might have been in her way. I don't know. But I'm holding her off. She can't hit me. I'm like, Khadija, stop. Khadija, stop. So she says, why are you, why are you yelling, Khadija, stop. Khadija, stop. You so big and bad. I said, look, I, don't, I am not, I am not fixing to fight you because you are not worth me going to jail. So she backed off of me. I literally cannot breathe. I walk back over here. And I kind of slump over right here. And I'm talking to her. I'm like, girl, I don't know what the fuck your problem is. I said, I can't believe you're doing this. This is whatever you're, whatever's going on with you. It ain't that damn deep. 
She's like, no, fuck that, fuck that. Go move your car now. Go move your car now. Go to the bathroom. Go move your fucking car now. So I was like, you know what? Fuck you. I'm not moving my car right now. So then she says a couple other things. I don't know. I'm standing here trying to catch my breath. I feel like I'm getting ready to pass out. I'm dizzy. I'm hot. I'm sweating. My heart is beating 50 miles an hour. I probably was having a stroke. I didn't even know it. So while I'm laying here trying to catch, my, while I'm standing here, I mean trying to catch my breath, she's standing right there where that middle cushion is, yelling and screaming, talking trash or whatever she's saying, calling me all kind of dirty and nobody, whatever, I don't know what the hell she was saying. I didn't pay her no mind. So I'm standing here. I'm like, I can't believe you did this. You just need to stop. I said, Khadija, I'm not fighting you, boo. I'm, I, I, I'm not fighting you. So at that moment, well, after I got my composure a little bit, well, I didn't even really get my composure, I come back to the room. She's behind me fussing and cussing, saying something. I'm walking to my room. I'm trying to find my phone so I can call 911. I can't find my phone. She comes to my door. I mean, voila, there's the room. I'm doing laundry. What you want me to say? So, um, you know, she's talking trash, calling me dirty because all this laundry sitting on my bed or whatnot. I'm sitting here on the bed, feeling around for my phone. Can't find it. I realize she's literally one foot inside my room. And I'm like, get the fuck out of my room. It's not enough that you already violated me. Now you're going to violate my personal space. Get the fuck out of my room, Khadijah. What you gonna do? So she's standing here. Let me see if I can get my foot. I don't know. I can't do it. Anyway, she's got one foot in my door. And she's pointing like she's giving me some kind of dog command. Get to the bathroom right now and go move my car. Go to the bathroom now. And I'm like, I'm not going anywhere right now. Get the fuck out of my room. So I'm sitting on the bed. I still can't find my phone, so I figured it fell outside or something, so I'm hesitant. I don't really want to walk past her. I come over here to the bathroom, trying to, you know, cool. I was going to get some water on I me and cool myself off, and all of a sudden, she charges from right there. Fuck this. I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to beat your ass. And she came swinging like wham, 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 wham. Before she even got to me, she was swinging. So by the time she caught me, I was standing here like this. But then I turned and I put my arm up like this. And she grabbed my arm and then she tried to come around this way and hit me. So I grabbed her other arm and she ended up slinging me into this wall. By the way, that's my blood right there. She swung me into the wall right here. So I'm kind of bent over because I almost trip over this fan right here. And she has an advantage on me because she can really like do some harm to me in this spot. So this is when I had to fight back. So, I grabbed her hair. I had her arms already. I grabbed her hair. She grabbed my hair. Um, I was trying to hold her off of me because I had her hair in my left hand. And her, her other hand, uh, her left hand, I had, I was holding that off with my right hand. Her right hand, she had my, uh, she had grabbed my hair. So, um, I pushed her real hard. I swung one time. I don't really know if I hit her or not. Well, no, before that happened. I'm sorry, let me back up. So she's got me pinned down. And, um, she's talking, I'm gonna fucking kill you. I'm gonna fucking kill you. I'm gonna fucking kill you. Um... I don't know how, I don't know how I, and I don't know, I don't even know what I bit. 
All I know is I'm bent down. She's over top of me. I'm holding her off this way. I got her hand, my her head, her hair in my other hand, so she can't really do anything except with her if she let go of her right, her right hand. I mean her her right hand. So um she tries to shove my head into the wall. So that's when I pushed her because I knew if she got me that way, she'd be able to swing on me. So that's when I, um, I think I bit and pushed. I think that's what I did. And, um, and I grabbed her hair. So we're like locked up right here. You know, and I'm like, let me go. She's like, no, you let me go. No, you let me go first and I'll let you go. And I'm like, I'm not letting go until you do. You, I don't trust you because you want some bullshit right now. And I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. So that went on, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, I don't know. And finally, I was like, okay, I'm going to let go. But So I let go of her hair, but I still had her hand so that she couldn't swing on me. So I let go of her hair. She backs up and goes to the living room, and she says, you fucking bit me. That's when I go to my room. I fell on the floor. Well, actually, not the floor. I kind of fell right here like this because I couldn't breathe. The next thing I know, I still can't find my phone, by the way. The next thing I know, I hear her on the phone talking about um, um, I bit her for no reason. And I'm like, what the hell? I couldn't believe she, one, had the nerve to call the police, much less say something like that with everything that she had just done. She knew no one was home that day. She plotted. She waited. She prayed that I came home before her husband did. Okay? Which I did. And she made it her business to do, she, 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 she premeditated that simple as that. That's all there is to it. So, she calls the police. She's sitting right here on the phone. Front door is wide open. I'm running around looking for my phone. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't believe she did this. I can't believe she did this. And she's on the phone fabricating the whole situation, the whole scenario, as if she's the freaking victim because she has a bite mark on her. Well, that was a defensive bite mark, plain and simple. And um, in a situation like that, you know, I'm allowed to do that. I did not see this coming. I saw her standing in the door. Had I known that there was the least bit of possibility of something happening, when I saw her standing in the door, I would have immediately dialed 911. I was on the phone with my daughter. Um, as it turns out, she didn't. That's why I was so upset that I couldn't find my phone because I thought she was still on the phone the entire time, but apparently her phone disconnected because her battery died. So she said she only heard, um, she said she only heard up into the part where, um, where she was saying, I'm on that bullshit today. Well, she was on that bullshit today. Um, that's what my daughter said she heard. Um, so yeah, um, that's pretty much what happened in a nutshell. Um, very upset and I feel unprotected by Cobb County Finest. They could have done some further investigating here on the set because text messages show I didn't have any beef with her. Um, as it turns out, one of the roommates told me that he knew she was going to do this because um, 
she was upset from, I think it was Thursday night. Yeah, I think it was Thursday night. I went out, I went to leave out, I don't know, around 10, 11 o'clock to go to the liquor store with a pack of cigarettes. And there were four, well, I was blocked in, I couldn't get out. So I called upstairs to her and Romeo. I'm like, hey, well, she answered first. So I'm like, is that um, your peeps, you know, behind you? I can't get out. They're, they're, you know, that's, that's the way I usually get out. So she was like, well, you have to talk to Romeo. And then she went into this whole spill about um, how, you know, that whole side of the driveway, her and her husband paid for it and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I didn't know that. And I didn't know whose car it was. And I didn't know that that was Romeo's car because it's not the car that he usually drives. I didn't recognize the car. I heard voices. I knew one of the voices I heard was her. So I assumed from what I heard, I was in my room with the door shut. I assumed from what I heard that she had company. Well, as it turned out, she had a client. Okay. So that night she kind of, you know, got a little nasty. And I'm like, why? I said, I don't understand why you're upset. What's wrong? She says, because it sounded like he was talking to me with authority. And I was like, no, I would never talk to you like that. I wouldn't disrespect you. I said, no, but I was just calling up, you know, um, that's all. And I said, I called twice. Nobody answered the first time I called. So I called a little louder the second time. Um, you know, I got a bad knee, so I was trying to have to go up the stairs if I didn't have to. And I said, it wasn't nothing. I didn't think no more about the situation. Well, that's not completely true. Um, that night, um, her room is over top of mine. I should say their room was over top of mine. So I don't know if she was talking to her husband or if she was on the phone. I don't know who she was talking to. But all I heard her say was, I heard her vamping how upset she was about that situation, which kind of didn't make any sense to me at all. But she was really going off about that. And I heard her say something about um, um, how I lay around all day and she grinds, she works, she hustles, she makes money. Um, she don't need me to help her. And yada, yada, yada. She make her money by herself. She run her business by herself. She don't need me. So um, the next morning, so anyway, I heard that. Then she came through the house ramping and ranting and raving. I didn't really, I was in my room with the door shut watching TV. I didn't pay her no mind. So um, the next day, I get up uh, to go out and I'm blocked in again. So this time, instead of hollering up the stairs, I knock on her door, I knock on Romeo's door. I'm like, hey, I don't know whose car this is, but I'm blocked in again. So um, Khadija said it's not hers, talk to Romeo. So, Um, Romeo came out, he moved the car, I went on a, oh, okay, so wait a minute, on my way out the door, I knocked on her door again, and I said to her, I said, Khadija, listen, hon, I said, I'm not going to be upset if you don't participate in the business class, it's fine, I'm not going to be upset about that, it's not hurting me. I said, and I thought you knew this. I said, but I work every day. I don't lay up in here all day long. If you thought I was laying in my bed all day, I said, no, I'm in my room working all day, sitting on my bed in the daytime, laying in it at nighttime, and I'm still working, okay? So I was like, well, you have a good one, and I left. I didn't think anything of anything. Um, there wasn't, she wasn't in a negative space. She was in a negative disposition. I wasn't in a negative disposition either. So I left, went on about the day. That was Friday morning. Saturday comes and goes. I ain't seen her since that morning. Sunday, I get up, go make, run my errands. I come back, and that's what I was met with. So there it is.